Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at five of the worst bayonets of the 20th century. Now I've graded these based on their use as a bayonet, their use as a utility tool uh, for a soldier in the field, and I've also graded them on their logistical practicality. So first up, we've got the Model 1943 Spanish Bolo based off of a um, Spanish uh, Pioneer's Bolo Machete. Uh, this bayonet was absolutely hated by everyone who has issued it. Uh, it was designed to be a really, really good uh, utilitarian kind of tool with the big uh, Bolo there for chopping and um, even using the back of the blade as a hammer because it is pretty heavy. However, the size and the weight of it, it was not particularly uh, useful as a tool and not particularly useful as a bayonet. And um, from what I've been able to tell and what I've read, all the Spanish soldiers uh, who use these absolutely hated them. And uh, it was almost immediately that they were um, replaced by the Spanish version of the 84-98 uh, bayonet, so they didn't last in service very long. So my next pick for uh, one of the worst bayonets of the 20th century, this one um, this one stings me a little bit actually because it's actually one of my favourite bayonets of all time, I'm a bit of a francophile, is the model of uh, 1886 Epi bayonet for the uh, Labelle. Absolutely gorgeous bayonet, um, absolutely one of my favourites, but I've ranked it pretty low. Uh, that comes down to the strength of the blade and the practicality of the blade. So when this uh, bayonet was designed, it was made to be very, very light and very, very long. They wanted it to be as long as it possibly could for the least amount of weight. And they achieved that with a cruciform blade. Now, my big issue with this bayonet is it's extremely fragile. When um, they were stabbed into a target, quite often they would bend, quite often they would break. And as a result, many of them were, when they did snap, were cut down in length, and some more than uh, more than once. When these are cut down into something nice, uh, nice and short, like around the 10, 8 inch mark, they make quite handy little trench knives. But at the end of the day, you've still got a cruciform blade that it's not very utilitarian, and logistically, it's absolutely huge. I can barely get it in the frame here. I have to move it back and forth. Imagine being in the trenches in France in the First World War with one of these. Uh, not only do you have an absolute uh, giant rifle, the Labelle, or the, even the Bertier rifles were pretty big that these fitted to, but you've got this ginormous bayonet to stick on the end of it. And when the bayonet's not fitted, it's in the scabbard. And look how long and unwieldy that is. So I was actually having the debate that... Um, Ian McCollum from Forgotten Weapons did a segment with uh, Albonia, where you're a treacherous war minister and you have to equip your soldiers with uh, poor choice of weapons. So I actually picked the Labelle because it's weak, it's fragile, it's unwieldy, it's a logistical nightmare. As much as I love it and as beautiful it is, um, it probably was one of the, the worst bayonets of the 20th century. In terms of being a bayonet, it would have been very, very effective. Uh, make great stabber but it's going to get caught inside a person um it's too long to use in the trenches it's not logistically practical to use in vehicles or uh close quarters um so yeah unfortunately it ranked pretty low for me the next bayonet i'm going to look at is uh the english number four mark ii bayonet spike bayonet so the english moved away from uh saber bayonets and decided that they wanted the bare minimum that you needed to stab someone. And a screwdriver, <laughs> realistically, is about all you need. Now, these were tremendously unpopular. Soldiers didn't like handing their um, 1907s back because the 1907 has a functional blade that has other uses. This doesn't really have any other uses except stabbing a person. Um, there were, that's not true actually. Uh, you could attach it to a helve and use it to detect mines. Um, but let's be honest, you could detect mines with anything. You don't need a special adapter bayonet for that. Uh, these were tremendously unpopular. Soldiers hated them. 
and almost immediately uh, they were replaced. Um, well, not almost immediately, essentially, almost immediately um, they started development, uh, making them cheaper, uh, cruder, you know, the number two star, the number three. And then after the war, they went about replacing them really, really quick with the number seven and the number nine. So they didn't last very long because, um, in my opinion, they weren't terribly good. That being said, I like them. I find them very, very collectible. I may have ordered a huge bunch of them that I've got coming in shortly, and you'll see those in upcoming videos. So the next thing that I picked out is uh, the number four Mark Seven or the number seven uh, lands Mark One bayonet or whatever it is. So this is one of the bayonets that was, um, I think it was actually made for the number five Sten or something like that. It wasn't made to fit the number four rifle, although they were issued to units with number four rifles for ceremonial reasons or whatever, I can't remember. Um, my issue with this bayonet is while it looks functional uh, compared to the number two as a knife, uh, it's got a number of other issues. So the first issue is the muzzle ring I've got my thumb on here is completely non-functional. Because this is a socket, the muzzle sits back here. So that is a completely non-functional muzzle ring that was just taken from number 5 bayonet. Now, that's not too big of an issue. However, when you pair it with this button here, so from what I've read, there were reports that this button sits too high and uh, bullets would strike the button and uh, ricochet or fragment or bits and pieces would hit the muzzle ring and pose a huge danger to shooters. So this bayonet was not really safe to shoot. Uh, further, huge weak point in the pivot here and they were prone to breaking when used in the field. Uh, not that they really were. So beautiful bayonet, great for ceremonial purposes as it was made. Very, very expensive uh, and logistically crap. Now, my last pick is the, uh, the Bosun Nagant 9130 bayonet. Now, I've got probably three major issues with this bayonet. The first off being it is a socket bayonet. Now, in the late 19th century, that's not too much of an issue. Sockets are still relevant. But by World War II, what the hell is Russia still doing with socket bayonets? They were absolutely miles behind the rest of the world. Uh, on top of that, they've got a, a cruciform blade, as I've previously stated with the um, label. Not particularly uh, useful for soldiers in the field. It's not something they can uh, use. It doesn't even have a handle like the uh, the label. So other than using it as a bayonet, there is no practical use for this bayonet. And um, the final issue I have with these is uh, Soviet doctrine was to keep these fitted to your rifle at all times. They were not issued with scabbards and they were not issued with a way to store them. As a result of these, when soldiers had to remove them, when they were in trenches, in vehicles, uh, moving logistically, packing rifles in crates, they got lost. Soldiers were sticking them into their belts or holding onto them or um, however you want, but Essentially, large numbers of these got lost, and the Soviet uh, Union were very, very unimpressed with them. Uh, and in uh, 1944, they replaced them with a side-folding bayonet on the Model 44 carbine. Uh, for whatever reason, they kept the cruciform all the way through the, uh, the use of the SKS, and um, didn't come to their senses and get a, uh, a knife bayonet until the adoption of the AK-47. The early AK-47s didn't even have bayonets. They... Um, well, they weren't designed with them. They had a, a uh, bayonet that was made to be fitted to the rifle, not a rifle that was made to have a bayonet fitted to it. Anyway, this is my pick for uh, five of the worst bayonets of the 20th century, uh, based on what I have on hand as well. I'm sure there's probably a few out there that are just as bad, if not worse. Um, if you have any uh, any picks that you think are worse, uh, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any uh, great defences for these ones, uh, again, comment below. I'd love to uh, see what you have to say. Thanks for watching.